I just wanted to review a game of mine to show off people how to carry as Renata. Uh, this is like a general uh, diamond one up to master at max grandmaster lobby. Uh, apparently it shows everyone is diamond one, but for example if we click on Twitch's profile, we can see he was grandmaster a season ago, Nami was master a season ago, so these aren't really average diamond one jokes, right? Um, okay, so in here the game begins. So it's like a master plus lobby, right? That's what I wanted to simply say. Also we don't see the enemy team, so let's turn this off like that. Oops, wrong team. Like that. So in here the game begins, I'm just hovering Ezreal, uh, probably I could have position better downwards to cover the bot side of the area, meantime he covers the upper one, it's like a slight mistake from my part. In fact you shouldn't follow your AD carry, except if you are invading or going for some type of cheesy trade, but usually you should cover the bot side and he covers the top side of it, right? It's not good if you are in the same spot. Because then he can maybe somehow infiltrate in your own jungle either this way because someone is not guarding or this way, right? Okay. So in here watch out what I do. So it's really important to do this, especially if you have a vulnerable jungler with almost no sustain like uh, Talon does. So when you are leashing you want to start out with your E ability. Because the thing is, if you are leashing you can't level 1 cheese with your Q in here or maybe in this bush, which usually means you are locked into starting with your uh, E because here's the thing, even if you put a point in your Q uh, they're gonna stay behind minions and then you won't get the root value, you won't get the stun value, right? Because these people know how to position which generally means they won't get the Q off and the Glacial Augment proc, right? So usually the E stat is the thing when you are playing in... Uh, when you have to leash, but I would say in lower ranks there is a world where you start with your Q, if you have like two targets, you have maybe a Draven AD carry or Kalista, really aggressive uh, early game champs with a Renata, I, fe I feel like in lower ranks it's fine if you start with Q, if you are really confident that you can get some early Qs off. So watch, watch out how I position, soon I will start with my E, and I step forward and I tank the first auto attack of the, watch out, I tank the first auto attack of the golem, because I have the shield on myself, right? And then I back off a tiny bit and then the golem auto attacks the talon which is also shielded which means that uh, the shield soaked two auto attacks from the golem which would deal 78 damage. Just like that, right? And also I'm auto attacking, as is auto attacking, we are mo making some movement type. Uh, and here's the thing, uh, I'm reapplying my passive as well, so we clear it a bit even more faster, right? Gave him a really good leash, it's really important to give a good leash for Talon, because right now his clear speed is really slow. Okay, now we are back in the lane, right? And we can know for a reason they fake fished. Why do I say that? Is because we can see like they didn't use any of their mana, which more than often means they fake leashed. Um, and uh, the thing is like... Um, Kong cannot really be like this champion actually needs a leash right now because his full clear got nerfed really hard so in here they're either playing some mind games because they didn't use their mana which means that there is a small chance that they leashed uh, but we can look top lane as well and Camille was sitting in this bush I'm not sure if you guys noticed it but look so legit Camille came out of this bush so then there is no way uh, well, she came out kind of quickly out of the bottom side of the mana and she didn't use her mana either. So most likely Wukong pets top lane and not bot side. The other reason is for that we are having good, some good amount of escapes on bot lane to escape his ganks. And also he wants to pet into Warwick because the general playstyle of Warwick is to play really aggressively deep in lane, go for heavy trades. And that's where like Wukong can punish that, uh, that those type of trades, right? Because people that know how the Warwick funny works with the barrier and passive getting low HP will understand why Warwick gets weak sided and also Wukong in these days needs a double dish so I feel like most likely they started bot side right we don't know yet but that's my opinion that they most likely st and in here Ezreal had a slight mistake I should then ping him I think I pinged him actually did I ping him? so in here of course like we are sitting in the bushes and the enemy Seraphine or Twitch ward it right and in here I should then ping actually the Ezreal to auto attack the ward. And in here I didn't ping him to auto the ward. Because if we get the ward out, I went for another auto attack. If we get the ward out of the way, uh, they don't have vision. Which means I, we, we have like a bit of an extra XP and gold. And we have like 
They don't have vision, which means that it's harder for her to connect her abilities and know where I am exactly in the bush, which allows me to go for easier pokes if I ward this bush, right? But it's not a big deal, it's not the end of the world, but it's just a slight mistake. I didn't get clipped by that, it's really good. And in here I'm looking to punish, but it's a bit hard to punish. But I went for an auto attack, an so that's something, right? My shield soaks are auto attack damage. That's not necessarily bad, and watch out what I do! We get level 2. We get level 2 and I step up aggressively. Because they are both need this minion to get their level 2, right? And watch out what I do! I don't have my E up, but I still commit for an all-in. Because Ezreal can also all-in, and his base damages are not necessarily bad. Um, so in here, look, I flash. I flash because, here's the thing, this flash trades trades flashes, look. So this is really hard to react to, by the way, right? I pull him out and he's in the glacial field, which means he can't really walk out of it if he's in the glacial field, right? He was here. So there is like, it's really hard for him to escape, right? So in here, this, this kind of forced out his flash. And also, it doesn't didn't only trade my flash for his flash, it traded some degree of HP. So check this out. That's a lot of HP trade, so for a flash I trade that like 400-300 damage, right? 400 something. And I got his flash, and his flash is really important because he can get really vulnerable to a Talon gank or to my Q. The next time I Q him in the Glacial Augment field, he might just be dead, so this is a really good way to trade flashes, right? And we get some chip damage on Seraphine as well, which is also really great. Um, okay. And in here I go upwards, like the chances are really high Wukong started from both sides, but we don't exactly know, we don't exactly know, so I gonna ward this, just for safety. Just for safety I gonna ward this for now, just like that. I throw there my E for no reason apparently, I don't know why did I do that. As really even gets punished a little bit because of that, uh, he gets used by Seraphine. And in here again, I'm stepping up aggressively, I'm trying to zone switch away from CS as much as I can because I have my Q up. And uh, it's really hard for him to step up right now into my Q. Okay. We get some cheap damage on the Seraphine, not sure abilities of course. And in here we are pushing, I'm, I think I've been thinking or telling Ezreal to push. I'm pushing it as well so he gets the message. In here we get chipped a bit because we were stacking on top of each other so my movement was bad. So I should then position something like this. In fact it would be really smart from my side if I don't position behind Ezreal. Look, let's go a tiny bit back. So my positioning was actually really bad. Because we are hugging the ball, which means we have less space to sidestep, also the minions can uh, uh, block us a tiny bit. So how I should then position, uh, Seraphine wouldn't ever poke me, or even if she pokes me, that messes up the last hitting pattern for Twitch. Like look, so for example, in here we had a bad positioning, we stacked on top of each other in here, right? From my part, uh, either me or Ezreal should position downwards, one of us, we shouldn't get caught in the same AoE. AOE abilities that Seraphine throws at us because it doesn't touch the wave but if I sit in the wave or Ezreal sits in the wave um, if Seraphine ever Qs or is the minions Twitch can't last hit them anymore or he has to really hard sweat with abilities because the minions gonna have an uneven amount of HP so in here if she hits the minions with her QE she would probably kill these three minions something like that and would also disturb the last hitting patterns for these minions and these minions because her E E and her, her E most likely would hit the wave but her Q, Q would also partially hit the wave which means that it's way harder for Twitch to last it which also means that he might not be able to recall with a bigger item like a pickaxe right he may be just gonna get a longsword and refillable or two longswords right whatever it might be Okay, and in here, look, I ping Ezreal, we take Scatter Scrub, right? We take Scatter Scrub right now, because in the present moment, Wukong actually got revealed. Wukong actually got revealed on this part. You can see he's level 3. Should I go back even in time when he got revealed? Look. <laughs> oh, not even on the ward, on top lane, my bad. <laughs> That's on me, actually. 
So he went for a level 3 on top lane, but Gong's clear seems to be really slow, or I don't know how he's level 2 when he has 3 camps. His clear seems to be extreme. Oh, he got level 3, okay. So his clear seems to be a tiny bit slow, so he got rebuilt on top lane, that's on me, I didn't notice it. But definitely something you should pay attention to. Um, he didn't got rebuilt on the war, he was top lane, I just didn't look at that. Also, your teammate should generally communicate that. Uh, and in here we are securing crab after pushing. In my mind, I was like, Wukong should be top side. But I didn't really like visually see him, right? So, so like it was a bit flippy. But from w one side, I was like, if Wukong is not showing up yet bot side on this ward, <laughs> it generally means for me that he is not bot side right now because we are really deep in lane and we are vulnerable to ganks. So if he's not here yet, then most likely he won't be in, in here for crab anytime soon. But he was actually top side, uh huh. And also, even if Wukong shows up, we have disengages. I have my Q, as well as his E. So there wasn't like any type of danger because the bot laners weren't like following us up when we were doing scuttle scrap. So even if he would be there, it's not a big deal. Okay. okay. And in here we are just picking up the crab. Really important to tell your AD carry to pick up the crab because as Renata you can break the shield of the crab with your Q. It does a decent amount of damage. And also your E does a decent amount of damage. And uh, your passive is really good for DPS, so you, we can kill the crab even faster. It's really great. And also pay attention, I place two points in my E, no points in W. The reason for that is on Ezreal it's not the best to give him movement speed and attack speed, right? And your short rate is gonna be generally better because the shield is bigger, cooldown is lower, damage is higher. And the reason for that is you, you need to do this in matchups where you are looking to short trade. Usually your W is made to all in. Or if, if the enemy champions are diving you, or you are looking to dive the, uh, the enemy AD carry alone with your, with your AD carry, with your Ezreal, in case like Seraphine recall and his low HP, then put a point in your W, or if the jungler is coming to dive, then put a point in your W, or if you have some type of all-in champion with you like Draven, then definitely put a point in your W, the speed, the attack speed will help him. Um, but then again, like on Ezreal it's not the best, because on Ezreal like, you can safely choose when to all-in, which generally means which this champion is not really worth in general to put a point in your W except if you feel like that he's in some type of danger of getting doved or he plays too aggressively and you gotta play around that by putting a point in your W but with Ezreal generally you want to put two points in your E early on it's, it's really valuable and I didn't explain yet the rune, the rune options, right? I went for Glacial Augment, so when do you go for Glacial Augment, right? Um, here's the thing, most of the low elo Renata players, or most of the players in general would go for, how is it called, Guardian, one of the worst runes in my opinion. Some people go 80, but when do you go for Glacial Augment? So usually you can look at the enemy team or the enemy bot laners, right? Uh, none of these champions have dashes. Zero dashes, which means if someone stays, stays, into the, stays in the slow pit, in the glacial augment, their damage and their movements will gonna create get gonna get reduced, right? Which means if it's not a Lucian that can dash forward or dash out of it, then you can get value out of it. And also one other thing, people champions that have dashes, it's way easier for them to dodge your Q, and your Q is the only way you proc uh, glacial augment before six, right? And after six, you, you can proc it with your ult, but it's kind of hard to hit it if you don't connect your Q, right? That's where also Glacial Augment comes in the play, later on it will be really good to ult uh, the whole enemy team or a part of them. Then they are also slowed, which means it's really easy for your teammates to hunt them down and also their damage is reduced, which is definitely great. Um, it's one of the best scaling runes in fact on Renata, so I, I feel like Guardian is just a bad rune and I feel like you don't necessarily need it, even against poking matchups, I feel like... Mm, maybe in poking matchups you can take it, but I'm not a big fan of the rune itself. In there I tried to go for a Q angle, but it didn't connect sadly. Okay. So in here we are recalling, we are just backing off, there's not much to say. Now watch out what I do right now. I brought a wrong item actually. I brought a wrong item, right? I had 500 gold on me. I could then buy boots and refillable 
potions, right? And why do I say boots and refillable over anything else? We are in a matchup where moving forwards is not really getting punished, so if you can move forwards, it's way easier to connect your E without getting outspaced, and also your Q can be really punishing. So for example, in here if I buy boots, I have 355 movement speed, right? Let's type it down, 355, right? With boots. And Elucidity boots are really good as well to finish, and l let's say like Seraphine has 325, which means I would have 30 more movement speed than Seraphine has, right? Which means I can run into her and use my E and my Q on her, then we can go for an engage because she has no escapes. And Twitch has 330, which means I still have 25 more movement speed, which means I can't really be outspaced um, if I want to punish with my abilities, with my Q or E. And if I connect my E, we can get a really good all-in uh, uh, combo. And also Seraphine has skill shots, and the faster you move, uh, the easier it is to sidestep and it's especially important if they would have like two poking champions, not only one, then boots would be even more valuable just to punish them with your all in and sidestep their abilities. So what I brought, I brought like nothing. This is actually nothing. I brought a fairy charm and a refillable which is not all that great. Like it just doesn't not provide enough. So that was like a mess up from my part. And in here we are slow pushing. The reason for that is we are slow pushing because um, we don't necessarily have yet priority for Drake. And um, basically we are just last hitting until uh, Talon will hover around. Because like with Renata you have a great pushing power. So like you can you can have a great control over the wave because of your passive QEW, AOE damage, DPS of course. So it's not too hard to have control over the wave in general. And also I use, watch out, I use my Q in here to see if Wukong is lurking around, he's not. But I think it's a bit of a bad angle. And in there I had a slight mistake, I didn't pay attention. I didn't pay attention. Look. I could then actually Q the Seraphine and get an all in her, look. So Twitch appears. Twitch appears and I back off too much for no reason. Uh, but as, at the same time Wukong was missing, right? So Twitch appeared and in here I could then get a Q angle on Seraphine if I don't play this safely. Look. But I play too safely and my eyes were too fixated on the Twitch instead of trying to look for a Q in on the Seraphine while pulling her inside the wave and also slowing her, which means Ezreal can get some chip damage off. Look. So in here, I, even now I had a Q opportunity, really, really good, but I didn't walk towards her and didn't have more movements, but I didn't have boots, that's that's one of the issues, right? I tried to get the Q on on Twitch, but it just doesn't work like this, right? I just can't get the Q off because he's out of range, so in there I could then try to get the Q on the Seraphine, it would be easier with boots, uh, but I was too fixated on the Twitch, so we didn't get an all-in potential on the Seraphine, sadly. I just go for some cheap damage, right? Now there's a smell you can feel. So watch out, I go for some cheap damage. But I could then also poke from this area. So Seraphine um Denies, denies some minions from Twitch, right? And also, um, the trade is kind of worth for me because Seraphine trades back, but my E also gives me a shield and deals damage, which in general means it should be worth for you to go for this type of trades because, of course, uh, the enemy support traded on me, but my AD carry traded 
my, me and my AD carry traded on the enemy Twitch, which in general means it's more worth because I have refillable potions as well and Twitch is less sustainable. We can see I didn't chirping the Twitch, uh, the the as real, right? Because we can hold three minions on our side, so the wave is on our side, which generally means we are ungankable, right? If we hold the wave on our side, so they shouldn't even auto attack his minions. Because my shield will also soak the damage from the minions, so we generally don't lose out much. And watch out, I eat, but I didn't eat the minions. I eat the wall, eat anywhere you want, but not on the minions. So you get a shield and you don't uh, you don't touch the wave. Now three minions won't freeze. You need four range minions with full HP. But um, here's the thing: at least the wave is on your side. That's important. Okay, I'm back. Just a sec. Now I'm back. And uh, let's see again what happened. So in here we are holding the wave, and at the same time I'm assessing, right? Signals are missing because uh, he could get collapsed on by Seraphin and Twitch the Kasadin, or perhaps they could be on the Drake as well, which right now is not contestable. Uh, the reason for that is um, our jungler is not on this side, which means they have a smite, and I don't know if Kasadin could ever provide enough to contest the Drake, so we didn't risk it. There is some level of risk out of it, so we didn't bother. Then Wukong is rebuilt at his top side. So I'm not quite sure. I think maybe they went for a scuttle scrap. Maybe they went for a crab. Yeah, I think they went for a crab or blue aura, I'm not sure. But when Wukong was revealed, I could then just simply ward, but sadly I didn't have ward, so if you have any type of wards, then go ahead ward it. Because they maybe, maybe there is a small chance they are doing it in two. Then again, like, they didn't even take crab, I don't know why did they go upwards then. I don't know, they didn't even steal the blue. So now Wukong was topside, right? Remember, the enemy Wukong was topside, and he had no top camps. Talon checked them as well, right? That he had no top camps. Which in general means that he should be most likely bot side. But there is a word where he actually regangs top lane as well. Because Wukong is quite uh, I mean Warwick is quite deep in the lane, right? That's a option as well. But at the same time Drake is up. So that's also a consideration, and Warwick has his ult to also escape. But at the same time, look at our position. We are positioning quite deep as well, which means we are also vulnerable to ganks. Since he has both side camps up right now and we are quite deep in the lane and Drake is up, the likeliness is higher he will show up in here than top lane, but you don't know, you don't ever know. You can only have some type of ass assumptions of where the enemy uh, jungler could be. And in here I pink him the Drake. I simply pink him the Drake. The reason for that is Wukong is level 5 right now. Our Talon is 6. We have a good mid priority because the guy is low. Our Kassadin is a bit fat. He's behind. Uh, I could then also ping Ezreal for help. So he doesn't get like 1v2 on bot lane if he doesn't pay attention. Or also he's in the fight if people are choosing to fight. Uh, but I feel like most likely they won't bother to contest. And it's really good to take Drakes with Renata. I had a slight mistake, I didn't shield the Talon. Uh, but it's really good to take Drakes with Renata because uh, of your passive, you can take these type of objectives down insanely quickly compared to any other supports. Definitely really good to apply those auto attacks, right? And I didn't use my W. I could use my W on Talon. Uh, for attack speed to get it down a bit faster, right? I could also use my Q to get it down faster, but you should keep usually you should keep these abilities uh, If they are trying to contest, but if they are not trying to contest at all you can use them But it feels like really bad to use your W Because it has such a long cooldown and we might need it somewhere else So I just chose to hold into it in case people contest 
I have those abilities to counter them, right? Because both of them have really long cooldowns, right, in general, so it's, it's supposed to be bad to use them, right? And in here I was, uh, oh I didn't have my E up, uh -huh. but if you can you should definitely E your uh, ally champions if they're getting poked. I didn't have my E up actually. So Wukong is hovering, we know his position. So Wukong was bot side, so now we can see that we are, he's not 6 yet, so that's the important thing to understand. He has no bot side camps and he's not 6 yet, so um... We can play things a bit more aggressively in here, but at the same time we hold our position, so we stay in here, not too deep, but not too defensive either. Just in a good spot, because Wukong can't really gank us right now. In here Twitch gets 6. As will base his ultimate, and sadly I didn't see, actually I didn't notice that the, as, uh, that the Twitch actually got level 6. Because I didn't move my camera I do believe, I didn't tap. I didn't see he got 6, 6 is quite important because that's where he gets the bonus range, the lots of 40 damage, it's like 4 long swords, right? Um, so that was a mistake from my part, I didn't actually notice it, which means that they might, might, might be able to get an all in angle on us. But in here we get also 6, just like that. So in here I choked my E, I choked my Q as well. And the problem is I missed my ult as well, and 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 I thought Twitch is level 5, but he was 6. So that was a mistake from my part, I didn't notice he actually got 6. Which means that uh, he can get an all in, because I missed everything. I don't know how did I manage to, but I missed ever even my ultimate look. And, and that was unfortunate, because I was out of fuel, and uh, Twitch just showed up with his ultimate, but I didn't know he was 6 in the present moment. I tried to kill him, I tried to bail out. And he survived, but uh... It's, it's really good that he survived, but I should have flashed there. So look, in here I could have actually flash. I, I, I don't know, I just greeted on my flash actually, I should have probably flash. So I also get out of the range, but I think I couldn't react to it or something. So in there I could then also try to probably just flash and hope I get out. Um, that was also a mistake from my part. I think he survived soon. Yeah, he does. Yeah, we can call it a sacrifice. And also really important to... That was an accident actually. So it's also really important to ping what they use there. They ignited, Seraphine flashed, she exhausted, she ulted as well, which ulted too, which are really important informations for people that are trying to gank us. And in here everything gets pinged eventually by the enemy team, not by us. <laughs> so in general you should ping those things, but because I didn't pick up everything, so it, it's fine. But in general you should aim to ping those things as much as you can. In there I could also just pull the wave to just E upwards without touching the wave and um, I could just also pull the minions together so the wave is pushing towards us and probably it was a bit of a mistake from my part to step up so aggressively because so many people were missing so it was a slight mistake from on my side and now I in here I back off completely because Seraphine Twitch could hover yeah he's here as I said he could be here but at the same time I should ban danger ping as well because which could be also mid lane by chance, right? Okay. So I warded, I bounced the ward, pay attention, right? I walked all the way in here, clicked on the tile, bounced the ward inside that, so I don't have to walk all the way like this and ward. Because then I might be caught in the Seraphine uh, abilities, which all in right, uh, so it's a better way to ward.
I mean, in there, honestly, I could ban him faster, Dazril, because like which wasn't in E range, so I could man get the shield on him. And in there, we disrespected a bit the enemy jungler, uh, because uh, we didn't like play accordingly to the fact he was missing. But I could disengage the uh, my re carry from the from the backline. I killed them. I ulted them away. But here's the problem: uh, the Azir still dies, so I couldn't do much about it. But the good thing is, at least I escaped. And in here, Talon comes up to pick up everything. Uh, I tried to pick up the Wukong, but as sad sadly as uh, don't have enough damage as Renata. <laughs> if in, in here Talon rotates, Silas is here. And look what I do, I cluelessly walk up, but I act like I'm clueless, right? The reason for that is that I have a stopwatch, so I'm right now baiting Silas into all inning me, so Talon and the other guy can collapse on him. Also I got a Q and the knee, of course, so I'm just walking up as a vulnerable target, target to Silas, maybe I shouldn't use my E so I look even more vulnerable, which means it would mind control him even harder into all inning me, eventually that's where I will stop watch and my teammates can catch up to, um, to kill him, right? Maybe my E pushed him away from all inning, I'm not sure, but there is a word very good all -inning. I try to kill him, but he is a base, that's a bit unfortunate, and he also steals my ult, but my ult is not good on Silas actually, because it doesn't provide any damage. And it's not good in 1v1s, because with Silas he will mostly 1v1 at this point of the game. So, so I, I don't know, he thought my ult is that great, but it's not really. Like in the 1v1 scenarios where, where he's usually like playing, it's, it's not that great. Okay. Even in here we notice that there is a fight. I missed my E, but he picks up the kill. Which is totally fine. And uh, I reach it. I just take my B. Maybe there is a ward where I could man stay, but I don't know. Maybe maybe I could man stay there actually. Then I can W Talon, maybe I get the Q E off or bait with my body so they try to step up and Talon all in them. Maybe I shouldn't reset there, but I, I, I just really felt like it's time to reset for me. Like it was a big mistake from my side to not, uh, that I didn't buy boots and Yonia boots, early game rush to be important. Uh, it was a mistake from my part, because it also allows me to get my flash faster up than the enemy which does, which means if I trade flashes, I have my flash up, own flash up faster, which means it's easier to all in him. Okay. In here we rotate on the top laner of course because he is trying to get to the tower. Talon is here, but sadly it's a divine thunderer coming right, so for Talon it's impossible to beat him, especially in the durability patch with these items. So that's where I come in, in the play, right? So I ult her. Which also pushes her under tower because she has to auto attack her own uh, Minions, right? The minions are under tower, which means she needs to get under tower to auto them. And watch out what I do. So I W the Talon in case he dies, right? And also I use my Q and my E, right? I use my Q to push her under ta under tower. Look. I pushed her under tower. I also use my heal for safety. And in there we picked her up. In there we picked her up. Really, really great for my part.
and look where I rotate, right? So you should, like, if you don't know where to rotate towards, right? You should rotate towards the most vulnerable champion. So in here, Kasadin. Kasadin is not really vulnerable, and the problem is I don't have ultimate, so for me it's, like, almost impossible to collapse on the enemy bot laners, because if they have one ward, it's just not, it's just not gonna cut it, right? Also, Kasadin is pushing, which means until I arrive, the wave gonna be under tower, so I don't get to do anything, right? <coughs> But, at the same time, I could then go bot lane to get a possible dive on the Twitch with my W, so that's also an option. But, the problem is Seraphine could be around, which would completely disrupt it. Also, Wukong could be around, we don't know where he is, so I didn't consider going bot lane, neither top lane. I'm going mid lane to cover Ezreal from a possible Wukong gank, or from a possible all-in from Silas. <laughs> So in here Wukong could be in here anytime with his bot lane for some, I don't know why is he bot lane because Kasadin is not, not gankable while he has so many ultimates and the DP, the wave is on his side as well, right? Or like he's on this part of the map side, so he should be ideally mid lane, that's why I'm hovering the Ezreal, right? And also I leave a ward in here in case someone is camping there. Uh, I, you gotta also keep your guard up to look for a Q if Twitch, Twitch shows up, right? <laughs> Is bot lane. Okay. So he gets a Q, a W on the right. I know it's like the clone, but since he has first strike and he stacks the tier as well, it's actually worth for Ezreal to do that. Okay. And in here I'm collapsing on the bot laner since my ultimate uh, will come up in how much? Oh, it's not, it's not about the ultimate actually in this play, I'm, I was just trying to get the play done. But I think without my ultimate it's not really realistic that I get anything off. So probably I should ban cover Ezreal, I was thinking maybe I can get a gank off. But what I could ban do, since the jungler and the top laner is here and they are quite strong as well at this point of the game, I could ban go top lane just to secure the herald with my passive and with my W or if they are trying to contest, right? That would be more consistent than trying to go bot lane, because this could be also warded, and one ward just this... Like, if they have a single ward, that cancels my ganking opportunity, because I'm not too quick as, as this champion, as Renata, and I don't have my ultimate yet, right? Also, I don't have boots because I rush Aurelia. Which is good if you finish it, but early on it's better to get boots. It's good if you finish it, though. Like, it's, it's really good if you can finish it early on. It, it makes you really carry in general, right? <coughs> so in here, I don't know why, but they were ign ignorant of the fact that I still could sit here. And in here I try to get a collapse angle. I, I don't know why did I shy away there though. Mm. Okay. And watch out what I do, <coughs> I was pinging to help, right, because I knew for a reason, so look, I was even pinging the Kasadi, he didn't give a shit to rotate, right, but here's the thing, we saw them on the ward, and also they pushed the wave, which most likely means that they are trying to rotate on, on our Ezreal, which is the enemy Ezreal for them, the reason for that is he's being really deep in lane, let's say he's overstepping as well, look, so in here I could then ping my Kasadin, I didn't ping him, but I didn't ping him in time, I mean, I could have been assisting earlier, so he notices because I think he didn't notice it, or he was on the crab, the crab is not worth over getting like two kills, so he should been rotate here, that's on my, my, uh, that's on me as well for not, that's my responsibility, but that's not my fault, right? So it's your responsibility to ping, but you shouldn't be hard on yourself because, oh well, you didn't ping it, because this is something he should notice it for himself as well, right? I pinged it, but it was late. Um... And in here I have my ultimate up, Glacial Augment, Q, everything, right? And I know for a reason they will walk this path or this path, right? Or they may be gonna come all the way, something like this, right? But if they go the safest possible way, then I can't collapse on them, right? 
So that's a thing as well, of course. If they go the safest possible way, I can collapse on them. But if they go the safest possible way, then it's hard for them to kill the enemy as well, right? And also it takes them more time, so most of the times people will go the greedy way. And as I said here, here, I initiate with my ultimate because Twitch is in his queue. And when Twitch is in his queue, uh, he gains bonus attack speed, right? Uh, by how much? 45? And he also gains 100 attack speed from my ultimate, which generally means that he has 2.48 attack speed into Seraphine. And in here I all in them, right? I even probed my Shurelia, my W on Ezreal, so our all in is even stronger right now. I think my Q was a bit early though. I could then like layer my Q in the sense when my, uh, when my ultimate expires and I stun, I think I didn't layer it uh, well enough. So there was like a small layering issue, but it's not a big deal. I actually shouldn't flash there, because I had my W on him, but I guess he got scared. And in here they are collapsing, so I'm just running away, of course. I just tried to disengage him, but sadly I didn't Shut notice it. Down. The problem is I'm running at like no speed, uh, no movement speed, because I didn't get boots. It's really hard to like get any gangs on, right? But now I get boots, finally I get boots. Now it's definitely great to have more combat power, right? We, by, by buying the Shurelli items and by uh, finishing the item earlier on, because with boots you delay it. So it's kind of like an investment, you know? That's how the champion's personality goes as well. It's really like an investment, you know? And in here I'm trying to hold the wave, right? So we have a small freeze, or I hold the wave also for Kassadin, he can clear it before Drake of course, which also baits the enemy Silas into trying to all in me. I wouldn't die of course. I wouldn't die, but uh, I have so much as well, right? So in here I'm holding the wave, quite safe what I do. Kassadin doesn't really want the wave and I see they are fighting, so in here I choose to participate as well and participate into the Drake fight. And I leave the minions, the minions are not so important as much as securing this lake because the reason for that is they have also a bounty. And I see that the monkeys are fighting, right? And I will, from a long range I'm ulting and this either zones them away from fighting or, or it allows us to get an all in on them, right? But the main key, key thing is to zone them away, right? Because Camille was there, uh, Talon was there and the other guy. Silas, so Talon was generally in trouble, he needed my ultimate self, right? And in here I got a really great uh, ultimate on them. So Twitch went, uh, Twitch ulted, right? And I kill him and I and I push him away from my teammates, from me. Then we all escape. Just like that. I think I missed my Q on him, or he ulted away, uh, my E I mean. I think I missed my E, so that's on me actually. Yeah, and I kinda burned two summoners for no reason. That was like really greedy from my part. And in here I control warded the area to see if it's warded, and I'm also pinging for help, so we can steal this red, because there is a good chance Switch tries to get it right now with Seraphine. And we can collapse on them, or either uh, we just get the rest for free. And with Renata's passive we can get these type of objectives quite quickly. So, uh, I mean not really an objective, just a red, right? So like I was pinging for him on Warwick, it's really good to have a red on himself, so he has an even better chasing power. Like if uh, Warwick with red uh, like, uh, gets on top of you, he will just stick to you, right? In there I W the guy, I missed my Q sadly, I could have been a bit more patient of course. Um, it's really important to be a bit more patient with your Q because the speed they have on this <laughs> thing 
Like I could then also just layer it, my Q, when Warwick fears, then I can hit my Q for 100% because when they are feared, they can't move out of my Q, right? So I could then layer it a bit better to his fear, which means I will hit my Q, I get a knock, uh, I get a root and a stun on both of them and also they get glacial augmented and slowed, which means they won't ever win this fight. But I rushed my Q for no reason. It's not a really a rotation ability, which, which means if you use it once correctly, we get something done. If you don't use it correctly, then we might not be able to do so. And in here they are just disengaging basically. Okay. And in here the outcome of the game is pretty much the game is pretty much over, there's not much to say. We are just slowly ending in here, right? So that's it for now. If you guys have any type of questions, free to free feel to free to ask me in the comment section of course. Uh, right now I'm doing an enchanter run, I'm trying to reach master by only playing enhanced enchanters like Yumi, Renata, these type of champions like Nami, sometimes I play Braum, right? But right now I'm on a run where I mostly play uh, from uh, Diamond to Master, right? I'm actually quite close as well to, to finish this, right?